Hey everyone. Welcome to another episode of Mini Hacks Solved. My name is Mohit. I am a developer advocate here at Salesforce. In this episode, we'll solve the mini hack, build a Salesforce CLI plugin to invoke Apex methods for your Apex classes. Now, before we begin, let's explore what are mini hacks. Mini hacks are areas or zones at Trailhead DX or Dreamforce conferences where attendees can come and take on hands-on challenges. Now, these hands-on challenges have set of requirements and we provide sufficient resources to guide you to the solution. One area where this mini hacks differ from other set of challenges is we'll tell you how to solve these challenges, but there won't be any step-by-step -step instructions or code snippets to help you solve the problem. So therefore, we want you to enable so that you can think on your feet, learn about particular Salesforce technology using the resources that we provide and solve the hack by yourself. Therefore, feeling confident about learning a specific topic or module. All right, let's begin. All right, so for this hack, we'll be building a plugin that lets you invoke static methods from Apex classes. So let's walk through the requirements here. So our first challenge here requires us to build a plugin for the next generation of the Salesforce CLI. That means it's for unified Salesforce CLI. So the plugin should create a command execute Apex. So this is the command line uh, command that you will enter, execute Apex. And upon entering this command, the command should interactively ask you to select a class name from a list of classes in your Salesforce org. So that means it's gonna bring all the classes that you have in the system. And in fact, we're gonna limit it for limit it to five recently created Apex classes for this challenge. So once the class is selected, then the command should interactively pick the methods that you want to call from the class. So you have an Apex class and then you'll have different methods underneath it. And this command will be, uh, you know, the command will be smart enough to pick up that exact method. And then finally, once you select that method, the command should be smart enough to ask you for the values for the specific parameters. So for this challenge, to keep it simple, we'll assume only parameters that are allowed are primitive data types. And once the command sort of executes, that particular selected Apex method should execute. And the next time when you run the debug logs, you should see all the logs in your terminal. Now, when you have a challenge like this, it's a, a complex challenge. As you can see, it's an advanced uh, challenge to make you familiar with different aspects of building a Salesforce CLI plugin. So our aim is to actually divide them into smaller problems. So for example, our first problem would be to basically find out a way we can fetch all the classes from Salesforce and show it on our command line. Once we accomplish that, the next task would be to find how we can get different Apex methods for that specific class. That's again gonna be through the API and we will look into like, what are some of the APIs available for that? And finally, our task could be to read the different parameters of that specific method. And then uh, finally, we will execute that Apex class um, through the command line interface itself. So as you can see, it's, it's a multi-step uh, challenge. So in this challenge also, I would recommend that you look at some of the handy tips that are here, uh, because these tips can help you to get to the solution. So for example, we have shared a few tips on how you can use some of the, the inbuilt node packages so that you can establish connection between your command line interface and the Salesforce. And then, uh, you know, how can we generate those prompts? So, uh, you know, there's, 
there's a user requirements here. The, the command line uh, that you're designing should have a user interface because it's asking for different prompts. One of the prompts that we will need here is to a picker so that we can select the, the Apex classes. And then, you know, the same picker can be used to select for different, uh, uh, you know, methods. And to get the methods and the parameter, use symbol table of the Apex classes. So I think this is a very valuable information. And then the hack also provides some of the helpful resources that you can use. So the way I would approach this problem would be to first actually read through all the resources that we have here, just go through them once so that you are familiar with different uh, libraries that are available to you. And then finally, once we sort of understand and have an idea of what each of these parts do, we just assemble them just like as we do uh, any Lego challenge. So think of this like a Lego's pieces of puzzle here, and we're gonna solve every bit of the puzzle here and then sort of arrange them uh, to get the actual solution. So the first helpful resources that we have that we can use to get started is first we need to know how to get started by creating our first CLI plugin. So this document, you can find it on our GitHub repo. So you can go to Salesforce CLI GitHub repo and then look for a, a wiki called get started and create your first CLI plugin. I'll also share the link for this in the video description down below. All right, so first thing that we will need to do here is set up our developer environment. So you, you will need node building Salesforce CLI plugins is essentially building a Node.js project. So obviously you'll need Node and will be a Salesforce CLI plugin command tool uses Oakleaf under the hood, which uses Node. So you will need Node installed on your machine. Uh, and the next thing that we will need to do is make sure we have a package manager like Yon installed. And then we will also need TypeScript installed. So most of the code that we will write will be in TypeScript. Now, if you're very new to TypeScript, I recommend that you spend some time understanding TypeScript before you hop onto this challenge. I'll share a link for you in the video description below. That's gonna help you to get familiar with TypeScript. TypeScript is essentially a superset of JavaScript um, with types. So if you know JavaScript uh, with some learning around how to use types, you pretty much will be familiar with TypeScript. The next thing that we will need to do is make sure your Salesforce CLI is installed and is up to date. You can update Salesforce CLI by just running SFTX update command. So the next thing that we're gonna do is make sure that we have the plugin generator tool installed. So um, one thing you will need to do is run this command SF plugins, install Salesforce CLI plugin dev so that you have a new tool set that helps you in generating the Salesforce CLI project scaffold. All right, so um, let's actually uh, get to our command line so that we can start generating our scaffold for our specific project. So I've already installed all of the tools on my machine uh, and I already have this plugin dev NPN module installed. So I should be able to pretty much now run this command SF dev generate plugin. So I may copy over this command and move on to my command line. Now let's paste the dev generate plugin command on our command line. I'm using Visual Studio's terminal, but you can use your device native terminal as well. Um, so one thing we need to make sure before executing this command is to CD into the directory where you want this plugin project to be. So for example, I have already created a folder called SF CLI plugins. And I would want to CD into that and then execute my SF dev generate plugin command. 
All right, so the first thing that it's gonna ask is whether you are building a plugin for an internal Salesforce team. In this case, it's no, so we just say no. Enter the name of the new plugin. Now remember, this has to be all small letters. So I'm gonna say execute Apex is the name of my plugin. And then our description for the plugin. Um, this plugin invokes static Apex methods. And the author of the plugin, uh, in this case, it's gonna be default uh, author. And then I can select the code coverage I want to enforce. Now, in this case, it is the code coverage of the test cases for the Salesforce CLI plugins, not as Apex class. So uh, Salesforce CLI plugins also has this concept of you can write unit testing and integration testing, um, which are also called as nuts. Uh, and I'll leave a video in the description below to learn how to write some uh, unit testing and also uh, how to write integration testing. But for this specific uh, hack, we're gonna skip that. So I'm gonna say select the code coverage as zero for now. Um, so it's actually cloning it. As you can see, it's executing a bunch of commands um, and it's generating the project scaffold which you will see that it will already have some hello world program for you uh, already baked in. So our job will be to understand that and then copy and paste um, and then modify as per our specific business requirement here. All right, so it says it's done. Uh, the next thing is if I LS, I can see that specific project. Uh, all that I need to do is CD into that and then I'm gonna open that in my Visual Studio Code. Uh, so as you can see here, we have this source folder and uh, you know this already gives us a hello world command. Um, so this command basically takes in a flag from the input. Um, so you can provide any flag. Uh, so name flag here says, uh, whatever the name of the command is. Uh, and then based on that, it actually outputs uh, hello world. So it's basically just outputting um, the current uh, date, converts into ISO string, and then it returns the flag name and the time. So we can quickly validate whether this is running or not by just going to the command line terminal and then uh, we can run this command by um, a simple bin slash dev and then by saying hello world. We could even try something with the name flag here. So when I run bin slash dev hello world, as you can see, it prints hello and whatever the name I provide with the timestamp. So as you can see, it's already working fine uh, uh, for a hello world command, but in, in our use case or for our hack, we need to uh, create a command so that we can fetch all the Apex classes from the org and then find it methods and then the parameters of the method. So, so let's look at uh, uh, you know how to create a new command and how to sort of uh, work through that. So let's go back to our hack here. All right, so our job is to create a command which says execute Apex. So uh, we will be looking to um, sort of create a command called execute Apex here. Now, you could also generate the command by using sf dev generate command and providing the, the structure here. And this will take care of the scaffolding for you. Let's say what I could have done is I could have copied this sf generate command and the name of my command. In this case, it's execute and then the subfolder, which is apex here in this case. So this should have automatically sort of generated the command for me.
All right, so as you can see, there is an execute file and the apex.ts file. Again, it's it's hello world at this point. Um, it's not a completely uh, functional code at this point, but definitely it has given us some things that we can work with. Like for example, there was an auto-generated MD file. Now this file allows you to add the descriptions for your command, the flags for your command and its description and examples so that you could improve the experience of someone consuming your plugin. All right, so now let's work through our first task at this point. So our first task that we want to accomplish here from the mini hacks is making sure that I should be able to sort of interactively ask users to select a class name from the list of classes in my Salesforce org. So I need to limit it to five recently created Apex classes for this challenge. So basically we will be uh, connecting to the Salesforce uh, environment and then we'll be querying the symbol table to fetch all the Apex classes uh, and filtering it by created date and limiting it to five number of records. All right, so um, so for that, what we need to uh, do is, all right, so the very first thing uh, that we want to, to specifically do in this scenario is to make sure we establish connection with Salesforce. And to, to make it easier, uh, what, uh, we could do is we could add something called an auth info. So there is a class called auth info um, that could be added to uh, the Salesforce core that could be uh, imported basically from the Salesforce core. So the Salesforce core library um, provides a lot of utilities. So the idea with AuthInfo is you connect to Salesforce environment. So one of the utilities is AuthInfo and then we could also have connection uh, which holds the connection with the Salesforce arc. Now, what we need in this scenario is we also need um, to um, make some flags. So we would be uh, definitely needing flags in this case. So for our um, example here, the flag would be, uh, for example, we would need a flag for the target arc so that we could provide the target arc. Um, so we could uh, uh, definitely use um, a target arc uh, flag. So let's add in, um, the flags for that. So instead of, so I won't be needing this name flag and instead I would be needing like a target org and I could make use of flags dot, uh, there is something called as required org um, that lets me do things like, so it's always, you can use character and in our case, our character would be something like O. And then we need the description for the flag. So we'll, we'll add in some description. And again, the description can come from the MD file. So we could say get message and then uh, we could um, do target org dot description. And then finally, we would also want to include some summary too. So I'm gonna use the summary flag here. And again, the summary flag could come from the messages. So messages dot get message and it could be the summary. All right, now if you hover over here, it's gonna say that, all right, so so we would need to have this descriptions 
and the and the summary and also the example so all right so this error is happening because we need to make sure this is also declared here right here in the messages file so uh, we'll just need to make sure that this is declared so as you can see this error is gone now and i could also make sure that the summary information is right within here all right so the other thing that uh, we would want to um, sort of make sure is our md files so let's add in some description and some summary so for example let's create some more flags like for one for the org summary which should be the login username or an alias and the next one that we need is for the description now if you want you could add some examples too um, but in the interest of the time we're going to be skipping that section so the next step is to make sure that we establish a connection all right so the the first thing that we need here is to make sure that we can get the username for the org for the project that this plugin is going to be connected to. So when we run this plugin, it's going to be working on a Salesforce DX project. And that project is usually linked to an org. So the idea is here to make sure that we can get the username first. Um, so the way we can get that username is by making use of that flag that we just created. So I'm going to create a variable called username. And then um, what I will do is I'll use the flags. And in this flags, we have this uh, thing called target org. So I'll click on the target org. And then um, we could just use dot get username. So this should give us the username. Now, again, this is very standard. Um, the target any Salesforce uh, command, uh, associated specifically with this SF executable has this variable called target org. So you could read that variable out of the flags because this itself is an flags itself is an object. So we could provide the target org and then it automatically has this method called get username, which is going to give you the username of the org. Uh, and the next step is obviously to establish connection. Right, so which is to create that auth connection, and to uh, you know create that connection, what you would need is um, so let's say I want to create a a connection, so let's create an auth connection with uh, with Salesforce Arc. So to do that, uh, we we are gonna make use of this auth info class. So auth info class has something called create, uh, but remember that this is this is gonna be asynchronous. So so auth info class now you can say auth info dot and it'll give give us all the description. So as you can see, create is an asynchronous method. So asynchronously it constructs and initializes uh, an object. So we say create, and then uh, if you hover over this, it will show what are the variables it will require. So it usually just requires the username. So we could just provide an object with the username and that will create the auth info connection for us, All right? So the next step is, so this is an auth info um, instance of the class, but how do we actually create a connection object? 
again, a connection object has access to all the Salesforce APIs. So our next step is to create that connection object. So what I'm gonna do is say connection equals, and then we're gonna you make use of that connection that we just imported at the top. So we'll say connection dot create. Now, one thing that we need to make sure here is to add a weight so that, uh, you know, this information here is asynchronous. So it's an async method. So if we add this keyword called await, what it allows us to do is it's a promise that's gonna execute and then we can finally get the result set here. So we get, we're get gonna say auth info connection dot create and this, if you hover over that, you will see that you could, um, you know, sort of pass an auth info class to it. So we could just create an object and just pass in this auth info class. Again, this has to be a wait because it is asynchronous in in nature. We'll fix our variables here. All right. Um, so the next step here is to uh, make sure that our connection is actually working. And the way we could do that is by simply logging in. So I'm gonna say connected to, and then here in this example, right, um, this could be the username. So we wanna say this is connected to the username. We can get rid of all of these. We don't need this anymore. Um, and we could log some more uh, information, like for example, um, the version, right? So we could say, for example, dollar, we could say connection dot version of the API here. Uh, for returning, I'm gonna, uh, so currently this method run is what gets executed when we run this command. Uh, but it's trying to return some path here. Um, something is just gonna return something here. Um, uh, but for the time being, what I'm gonna do is instead of, it's just the string that's getting returned. Um, so I'm gonna, for the time being, we're gonna say, return user info or let's say API version. That's what I want to return as a string. And um, I want to return this API version. I'm gonna say connection dot version. All right, so now this is the first piece of the puzzle is to make sure that we are able to successfully authenticate to Salesforce org based on the standard authentication that uh, the Salesforce CLI provides. And then we are able to execute this command and the command promptly connects to that environment and returns a, a sum result. So this connection object is gonna be very powerful. It's gonna let us access APIs of Salesforce. So for example, I could, um, you know, access any APIs like uh, bulk to bulk API, even for the matter tooling API that we'll use extensively. Um, and we could do, uh, you know, query DML, and basically we can work with Salesforce APIs at this point if we are able to successfully get through the, the connection objects and the results. All right, so we're gonna save this. And, you know, to make sure that this actually runs against a specific org, uh, what we will do is we will uh, basically link this plugin so that this is available outside the context of this project so that we can run this plugin on our any Salesforce DX project. So to, to link the plugin, you can go to 
the documentation and I think uh, there should be a specific command to to link it. So so here's how you link it. So you say SF plugins link, right? So so that's what we would say. We would say SF plugins link. So let's run that command so that this actually links properly. Just trying to link this plugin. So all right, so as you can see, the plugin has been sort of linked. So now all that I need to do is find a Salesforce DX project. So I'm gonna just find a Salesforce DX project. All right, to make sure that this command executes successfully, I'm gonna find a Salesforce DX project and try to execute this command within Salesforce DX project. So this is a simple Salesforce DX project. It's linked to an org, a scratch org. So now what I can do here is to make sure that if the command is working, so I'm gonna say SF within a Salesforce DX project. So as you can see, it successfully says that it's connected to this specific org. And since this org is already on spring 23 release of Salesforce, it says 57. So that means our code that we have coded so far is actually working fine. And we've solved one piece of the puzzle, which is to establish a connection between our Salesforce CLI that we are building and the Salesforce org. So it's gonna take the default connection. So this specific project was already connected to a scratch org. Um, so it was able to just read and get uh, access to that specific org. All right, so our next step is to actually query for all of the Apex classes that exist in that specific scratch org. Um, so the way we can do that is by uh, running a query using this connection object. So uh, what we will do for, um, for that specific is we are gonna be using um, the connection object and a tooling query. So we can say connection dot and then it will let us select the tooling API and then we can say query. And then finally we could add the query within this. So let's actually store all of the, the result here in this variable. And again, this is an asynchronous operation, so it has to be await. Now when we query, we have to provide a SOQL and the challenge actually already hints us that you should be using the tooling API object and the symbol table. So if you look into the symbol table here, you can see that there is a symbol table that provides the constructors the, the information about the interfaces that this Apex classes has, the methods. So think of the whole schema behind the Apex classes, the grammar and the methods and its names and the properties all available via the symbol table. So we'll definitely be needing the symbol table. And uh, you know the challenge also actually hints that you can query for the Apex class information. So uh, here we have API version, body, and we could also query um, the symbol table too uh, from the Apex class. So our goal will be to first fetch all the Apex classes by just querying that Apex class object, and it'll have the symbol table. 
And then, uh, you know, basically we'll have to maintain a map so that we can look at that Apex class that the user selects and then dig into other details like finding out the methods of that specific Apex class or, uh, you know, the properties of that methods and all of the good information uh, of that Apex uh, class um, body and its structure um, from this symbol table. All right, so what we will do in this example is we'll just query. So I'm gonna add in a query to the symbol table here. So I'm just gonna um, be pasting here. So this is just a simple query, which fetches everything from the Apex class orders by last modified date descending. Now I'm gonna just log this information for now. So I'm gonna say this dot log and then just say result. Uh, and we'll just, all right. So if, you know, if this query is working at this point, we should see that, you know, it queries all the Apex classes from that specific org and displays them. All right, so let's actually, um, let's first make sure that our org has some uh, Apex class to it. So I'm gonna, um, just open this. Open the Salesforce arc and just add in a simple Apex class to our arc. This arc doesn't have any Apex classes, so I'm gonna just create a simple class called Hello World. And then um, it has a simple method to add two numbers. Public static add All right, so this is a simple Apex class. All right, so if our code works properly, then we should see the Apex class name printed with its symbol table. Um, so let's go back and compile our code using yarn build. All right, so the compilation is done, so we should be able to execute this. So as you can see, um, I can um, sort of copy this and then put it somewhere on the web using JSON lint and we could be seeing the prettified output here. So as you can see, I was able to fetch the records. In this case, it was only one record, and I can see the various methods here, its parameters, and um, there was no interfaces. So I'm able to extract all of the information about the specific class, including its variable annotations, and a lot of other information that you need about this Apex class through this tooling cycle. So as you can see, uh, at this point, we have established connection with the org. We can read in all our Apex classes. We can see the structure of that Apex classes. So we are almost 20 to 30% done with our challenge here, with our hack. Um, so the next step is to work on the user interface for this so that we can display these classes, allow users to pick the classes and the methods of that class, and then ask for um, inputs from the user and then sort of display the final results. All right, so the next piece of the puzzle is to provide the user interface so that the user can select one of these Apex classes. So typically we'll have like five different Apex classes to pick from based on the last modified date. And the user is gonna pick one 
uh, specific one. So to accomplish that, uh, first thing we would need is a user interface. And the good news is the SF plugin core provides you certain utilities so that it becomes really easy for us to implement user interfaces. So one of the things that the SF plugin core provides is called prompter. So I can import that prompter from SF plugins core. Now you can uh, browse through all of the APIs of the plugin score by just visiting the documentation. The link for the documentation will be shared in the video description below. So once you have the prompter, um, a prompter typically expects you to input a list of items to it. So I can have a simple private function here that says prompt users to choose Apex classes. And I can instantiate that prompter class. Now one thing is this whole prompter class has to be within uh, the core class. So we can instantiate a prompter and this prompter class requires you to pass the message that the user will get once this prompt is executed. And this expects you to send the list of Apex classes as the choice elements. So whatever is picked is returned as the response. As you can see from the responses, start target will return the value that the user selects. So all we will need to do is make sure that if there are results from our collection query, we need to make sure that we collect all the Apex classes from the query. So for that, we can loop over all the results, all the records here, and then we could just pass in the record name here. Now, one thing you will see is that there is a, a type error because we haven't declared the types. So we can easily actually fix this by declaring the types of our results. Query class and make sure that we provide the various types. So again, this symbol table needs to be declared. So to do that within our source folder, we can create a simple folder called modal. And here within that model, we could create our definitions. So I'm gonna create a file called symbol.ts. Oh, let's name this as symbol table.ts. So here we could create all the definitions based on the data types that we need for the symbol table. So now we could uh, easily import that. So all I will do is say import, then we will say symbol table from and you can see you can use the type scripts autocomplete to point you to that specific table. All right, so, so now you will see that this error is gone and we are able to push our Apex classes here. All right, so the next step here is to prompt user to select Apex classes. And as you can see, we already have this method. So we just need to make sure 
we call these methods. So all that we need to do is say this dot prompt and then pass in these Apex classes names to it. Now this is an async method, so we will await on that. So that's our selected method or selected. All right, so, so once, once we have that, we need to get the symbol definition. And the way we can do that is by using a filter function. So we could filter on the class names here. So I can say uh, a simple result dot records dot filter. So from this, I can filter out where the record name equals the selected class name here. So now I have the selected class record. Now the next step I need to do is to fetch the methods. So as you can see, uh, the methods can be easily fetched by using the symbol table method. So all that I need to do is say selected class record and this will be a list. So the first element of that and the symbol table dot method. So now I have all the methods. So the next step that I need is to prompt user to, uh, to make or to prompt the user to select the apex method. So, so just like how I've created this uh, function. So we have, we know the methods. Now we need to create a similar function just like how we created for, so we need to create that user interface. Again, it can use the prompter and here we're gonna pass the method. So these two are almost same. We could even simplify them um, and create a utility. So we just call them with respective options here. Uh, but in the interest of the time, I'm gonna just leave it here like this. So then our next step is to basically collect all the, uh, the method names for that Apex class. So in this case, we'll again loop over the for loop so that we can collect all the method names here, Apex method name. So we need to declare this variable just like how we have declared this variable. Again, this will be a string. All right, so the next thing is obviously to prompt the user. And again, on the same lines, whenever the user selects the method name, we will filter out the methods using the method name. So similar to, to line number 52, we just need one more filter to filter out the method names. All right, finally, so here we have all the methods name. Now we need the user to prompt with the parameter values. Now, again, that information is there in the methods. So all that we need to do is create another prompt so that we can prompt for the values. Now this is gonna be a bit more um, diff challenging because in this case we used prompter of type list. But for this one, we will need to make use of a prompter in which the type is gonna be string or number based on the types of the input. So for example, if the method parameter is of number type, then we need to prompt with a number. Uh, the input form element should be a number, but if it is a string type, it will be a text box. So based on that, and that's why you will see that this is gonna be dynamic. So we have a name as the string and the type also as a parameter for this method. Again, loop over, loop over all the parameters of that selected method. Again, selected method will be an array. So we loop over all the parameters and then we prompt with the parameter name and the parameter type. And finally, whatever the parameter values are coming, the name and the value pair, we push to the parameter input values.
All right, so finally what we need to do is we need to consider, we need to create the, the body of the Apex class for the execution. So to create the body of the Apex class, first we know that our parameter should be uh, comma separated values. So let's actually um, create them. So in this case, it will be a parameter of type string. So first of all, we also need to declare this variable. Uh, so I'm gonna go here and make sure that we create a variable as we did for the rest. So I'm gonna say const, this will be again string, and this will be again string. const right. so now as you can see we call them we push them so the parameter will not be of type string it's going to be a parameter value a custom one that again we could uh, make sure to create the data type for that. So all I'm going to do is create a data type for that. So now the error should be gone. We'll look into these errors that, that are popping up at this point at multiple places here. Oh, they are not. Okay, um, so moving on. So we have got the body. We need to further work on our body. So, so working further on our body, we need to make sure that we construct the body. So the body will be the class dot the method name, and then we pass in the parameters. And then finally we execute them. So for our example, so we construct the body. So it'll be class name dot the method name and then we pass in the final parameter string. Again, note that we need the brackets. So this is your final apex body. Then all we do is we execute them and get the output. And finally, we wanna make sure we return the output here. Again, the output needs to be declared somewhere at the top probably. So the output would be of type execute apex result so js force also has utilities for um, certain output responses so the execute anonymous by default is of type execute anonymous result so i would want to change here to say return me of type execute anonymous result and then finally what we will do is this whole output type that we have created is of type anonymous result. All right, so we have few more compilation errors and we, we will look into and fix them uh, before we finally sort of try to run this code. So our error says that is not assignable. Yes, so the reason is it has to go here. All right, so I think it's looking good except for this where there is an error unexpected await inside a for loop all right we're gonna just skip that all right so let's skip some eslint rules and see how it goes All right, let's build this code. All right, so let's look at the code from the beginning to the end because it was a lot. So our first step here was to make sure that we can connect to the Salesforce org and then get the list of all the Apex classes. So once we got that, the next step that we did was to create a prompt so that the user can select from the list of the classes. So once the class is selected, we take that class and 
get all the methods of that class. And then we prompt the user to select the right method. So once the user selects the method that he wants to execute, we prompt with the parameters that the user needs to input for those methods. So once we get all the information like the, the class name, the methods and the parameters, we just uh, construct the body of the Apex class and run our execute anonymous tooling API with the body. And then we finally return the output. So let's check the final output. So as you can see, once I execute this execute Apex, it's gonna ask me to select the Apex class. Then I can pick the methods of that class. I can provide the values and you will see that it compiled successfully and it sort of, I was able to invoke that specific Apex class. And as you can see, I can run the the command to get the latest logs and you can see that specific method was invoked and there was an output result um, as expected and that was it for today's mini hack i hope you enjoyed building the salesforce cli plugin with our new improved developer experience if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and hit that subscribe button so that you do not miss any other videos on our YouTube channel. Thank you so much for joining.